Welcome to Pop On Workshop. The CNC machine is an absolute fantastic tool because it makes it where you can duplicate different projects over and over. And this is one such example. Quite some time ago, I did a project using just some jigsaw and the bandsaw, and I cut this out, and I did it all by hand. A lot of you wanted to see this on the CNC machine. So today, I'm gonna draw it out in a V-carb desktop, and we're gonna cut one out on the CNC. So let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes. It really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendation back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. Now the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and open up a brand new file. We are doing this on a single sided and as far as the width. Now I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this one as a template to be able to get the measurements from. So I'm just going to copy those measurements. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a rectangle that's going to be four inches by 17 and a half. We're going to just drop that right into there. And let's go up here and we can actually make those exact measurements. 17.5. We're going to make this 4. And that will be good right there. We'll hit apply. Whoops. So there is my 17 by 4. 17 and a half by 4 inches. Now from there, I'll need to put a, put a handle in here. So what I want to do is just go ahead and make another rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be uh, 6 inches by 2 inches. So I have another rectangle right here. We're going to make this 6 inches, 2 inches, and we'll leave that alone. We'll create that. I want to have an inner radius here. Now this was six inches long, so I'm going to make this one four. We're going to make this four inches. And we're going to make it one inch that way. And I'm going to, that's four inch, one inch. Let's create it, and that will be good. Now we're going to take this, and we're going to slide that right up over to here. And I want to position it right in the center. I actually want to bring that down. Okay, we're on that grid now. And I want to cut this away. I can clip on cut. Cut that out. Cut that out. Cut this. That's what I want there. Okay, I'd like to be able to create a uh, radius right here. I'm going to click on this right on this point. And we're going to make this at a 05 And I think that will be good. We're going to do one right here. And we're going to do one right there. That looks a lot better. We'll close that. Now, 
The next thing that I want to be able to do that the handle is in place, I want to be able to go ahead and put in this center section here. And this one is going to be three quarters of an inch from here. So this is going to be a rectangle that we're going to create that's going to have no radius on it. But I want to be able to have this as far as on the x-axis. The total width is going to be 8 inches. We can actually make that 7 inches. I think that will work real well. And this is going to be 0.75. And I want to be able to create it. We're going to bring that down. Whoops. I didn't close it. what I want to be able to do is move this now right down to this point. I want it on that line and I want it centered right there. Now I want this at a 45 degree angle line in here. So what I'm going to do is just unclick that. Okay, I want to use the line tool here and I want to go from this point right here I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to draw this down, and I want this at a 45 degree angle. Let's highlight this one, and let's mirror the image, and we can click on this icon right there, and we can flip this on the horizontal, and we can do it right there and close that out, and now that is done. So now that I have that, that's the simplest way to be able to do it. Now I'm going to take my cut tool. And I want to be able to cut this right here. It's not letting me cut it. The reason I couldn't cut that is that's actually not joined. So I went ahead and closed those vectors right there. And then I just cut this out. Next thing we need to do is put in this slot. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of guidelines. I'm going to put one guideline right over to here. And I'm going to grab another one. We're going to put it right into this spot. Now, where do I want that? Okay, now I can come off of my center line and off of my center line that needs to be about six inches. So from here, from the zero, and I can bring that over six inches and we would have that right there. This would be the same thing, but in this case, from zero, it would be minus six inches and it would be right there. The other guideline that I would need to be able to have, I can pull one down from the top. I want to be able to start right here on that line and I want to come over to there, down to here, back over to this point, and then escape out of that. Now also, before I do anything, I want to be able to round this vector I have that at 0.5. That will be good. We're going to click that. And I think that looks good. So we'll close that off. I want to take this section right here and I want to flip it horizontal. We're going to flip horizontal and that puts it right down here at this end. And we'll close that out. Now the only thing I need to do is just cut this out now. We'll cut that. And now let's take the scissors and cut that out. And now we have what we want. Let's zoom back out. So there we have this all done. Let's close out my scissors. Let's right click and get rid of the, the guidelines. And that completes it. Now I have this little section here in the middle. I put that in so that the core can just loop around that. And I really don't use that anymore. But if you want to go ahead and put that in, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put that in also. To be able to put that little rectangle in here, it needs to fit right into this area. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle. We're going to make that one inch on the x-axis. 
and two inches on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and create that and we'll close that out now. now. Let's go ahead and bring that down to this area right in here. That should be good. All right, so that completes that part. Now we also need to have a very small rectangle for the cord to be able to hook onto. Okay, with the guidelines in place, I'm going to take the line tool and we're going to start right here at this point. We're going to come up to here, down to this point, and then back to the end point right there. Escape. And now we have it. Guidelines I don't need any longer. And I do want to delete this. And if those vectors are connected, this will allow me to cut it. And it does. So now I have my little cutout. That will take care of it. Now if you ever want to come back and change something, Let's say you have this radius right here. I can come over on the radius, and this is at 0.5. Let's change that to 0.75, and let's come over and click on this part right here. And that would be 0.75 right there. Brings it back to the square, and then it brings it to my 0.75. I like that a little bit better than the half inch. Now I decided to add the dog bones and I did one over here already but it's just to create the fillets you click on the dog bone and then I can just click on that and it creates the dog bone for you and that way when this slips into the um, French cleat it will go all the way down onto that cleat. I want to highlight this now on the outside and I'm going to go ahead and create the toolpath for this now. And I'm going to have this on the outside. That is going to be correct. This all looks fine. I have a name, cord wrap cutout 0.125 and I want to go ahead and calculate that. And now you can see that that is going to carve just fine. So let's uncheck this. Let's go back over to my 2D version. I want to click on this one and I want to click on this one for the inside. I got to hold the shift down and now with those done let's move back over to the tool pass. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to click on the uh, profile tool path. Same thing here. Starting depth at 0, 0.75 of an inch so that's going to cut all the way through with the same bit. This time I want to cut on the inside. And everything else will look fine. And then this time, we're going to change the name. And this is going to be the cord wrap again. And this is going to be the inside. 0.125. And let's calculate that. And you can see that is going to carve just fine. So all we need to do now is close this out. I'm going to save the tool paths and I want to be able to save both of these at one time. Those will be fine doing it that way. So create the tool path. I have both my end mills set up there. The cutout. I am going to change this around. The cutout will be second and it will cut the inside first. That is the way that I want to do it. X carve uh, inch is fine. That works good. We'll save the tool path now. Okay, I went ahead and saved the file. To do so, I just went ahead and clicked the file up here. And I went to save. And it is done. And it's going to be saved as the cord wrap. And that way, if I ever want to come back and carve this again, all I need to do is just pull this file up and it's ready to carve. So we'll go to the machine now. I'll get a piece of plywood that I can cut this out with and we'll set it up. 
Now in my haste to get everything saved and off to the computer, I forgot to be able to move the XY0 position from the center point back down to the bottom left hand corner. Because I went ahead and had everything saved, I'm just going to use the center point as my XY0 position. So I've just marked my uh, point on my board and I'm going to go from there. Now this board is actually a little bit larger than what I actually need. But I went ahead and marked this is going to be my XY0 position right there to be able to carve this out. I went ahead and put the machine over my XY0 position and I reset that to zero on the G code. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the Z probe and get that set. go and then I'll hit my macro and we'll do it. Okay the Z probe is done and now I'll move that right down to my zero position and I'll be ready to be able to carve. So now I have all three axes set. I'm just going to open up the file now and get started to carve. Now I really wish that I had remembered to move the XY0 point to the bottom left corner, but still and all it's going to work just fine. And you can see here it's starting to make those inside cuts first. And with that done it moves directly to be able to cut the outside. Now keep in mind I saved both tool paths on the same file and the reason that I could do that is because it was the exact same bit. And that really does make it easier. But I have shown in other videos where that was not possible and I have used multiple bits. So this is a very, very effective way to be able to carve these uh, different types of tools, jigs, uh, whatnot in the shop to really help out. And this is going to be a very useful one because I still have some extension cords that I need to change out to these type of holders. And I really love them. I hope you will too. And I hope that you find this video very helpful. And I would appreciate definitely if you would like, subscribe, and share to be able to get these recommendations out to everyone in the CNC world and the woodworking community. And that took a total of 9 minutes and 28 seconds to be able to carve. That's not bad. Guys, that's faster than I could do it on the jigsaw and bandsaw. Now that the work is done with the software um, and the design, I can cut these out now anytime that I want and do it even faster than before. The nice thing about the glue and tape method, when we're all done, you just grab a corner, lift it up, and it comes right off. This one was a little bit more of a challenge, but there it is. Now that it's loose, it just lifts right off. So this one is done. Not bad. Let's go try it out. Let's put a cord on this now. And here is the completed cord wrap. And I just happen to have a cord. So I'm just going to slip this over there. And I'll be ready to be able to wind it up. This works out really, really nice. It makes organizing your cords very easy. With the French cleat attachment on it, it makes it where you can just easily set these anywhere in the shop that you want. And it stores them out of the way. So I really like this. And I'll just slip this underneath. So here it is, all done and ready to go on to the wall. <laughs> I like it. Well, there it is in its new home. Now these other two right here I've made previously by hand and I really like having the new one on the CNC machine. So now I have one here I need to change out and I actually have one here and then I'm missing one cord that's out with my son. I'll make another one for that one and that will replace all of these old cord wraps that I have. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. 
If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.